Hello YouTube. Let's do the Orc Mantis. Ha! Huh. Right guys, so uh brief intro. This is gonna be a tear sheet type video for Orchid Mantis. Um if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I tried doing some sort of care sheet style videos when I first started doing YouTube. They were pretty crappy. Um, so I'm going to sort of try and start getting this up again. Um, maybe once every couple of weeks I'll do a care sheet type video. I'll put them all in the same playlist. Um, just a general run through of a specific type of Prey Mantis each time. Um, see if I can get some good footage of one. Uh, orchids, which is this one, uh, Himitus coronatus, coronatus, coronatus. I don't have the name in front of me, so excuse me, that could be a little bit wrong. Um, let me I'll find it later. I keep putting my hand up in the air. Don't know why. Um, anyway, uh, care sheet of these, these here, Mantises. Where was I? I was, I was saying things. I've lost the things. Yeah. Sorry, and I will try and get some good footage of whichever mantises I have. I do have a pair of orchids, female and a male. Um, and I thought this would be a pretty good one to start on, because, wow, I get a lot of people messaging me about them. A lot of people messaging me about them. And a lot of you say, why do you not like orchid mantises? Um, anyway, let's begin. Okay, so for a start, I don't dislike orchid mantises. Um, I just know the extreme frustration that people have with them. The absolutely extreme frustration. So they're probably about the most stunning common prey mantis you can get your get hold of. Most stunning common prey mantis you can get hold of. I think most people would agree with me there. I mean, for me, I'm personally over the orchids a little bit. Um, I do think they look stunning. They do, um, but. I would prefer to go for something else, personally. Um, but with this, it means you have a huge amount of first time keepers who are like, I want to get a prey mantis, I'll go for an orchid mantis. No, stop, stop it. Stop. Um, don't do it. They can have little issues. Um, and they are not as forgiving as other prey mantises. If you can keep them how they should be kept and never have any issues or never have any problems with their environment, they'll they'll be fine providing you know there is no problems with their environment. They are sensitive, they stress out, um, they just they're just not a not a very hardy prey mantis. And so for a first prey mantis massively I'm I'm saying no now <laughs> I know don't get me wrong I I got a couple of orchids as a pair of my first mantises and they were okay but I know so many people that get them their orchid mantis dies because something was done not quite correctly and then they're like well I don't want to keep praying mantises anymore this is silly you know I I don't want to deal with it um, so now I've played a bit of the blame game that was the blame game Let's talk about these mantises. So, I have a pair. I have a male and a female. The video footage you're watching right now is my male. I believe he's L3 and my female is L5. So, first things first, the males, the way you can tell, same as always, uh, more segments on the back. So, generally it's eight segments for a male, six segments for a female. I I think that's pretty much the same for all of the mantises, but some of them are a lot harder to be able to actually see than others. Um, but that is, that is, you know, a good way of telling. I mean, you don't always even have to look at all the segments. You can look at the very final segment, and the female will have a singular one. And the male will have lots of tiny little segments. Unfortunately, at this stage, though you can see it, it's uh, still a little bit of a, a little bit of a task to actually see on this size prey mantis. Um, second thing, antennae, 
uh, Anthony, Antene, Antene, <laughs> head whiskers, um, males, most mantises, longer. Um, distinguishing fact for most prey mantises, wings, females tend to have wings that don't uh, reach the end of their body. Males always have wings that get a little bit further than the end of their body. Uh, that's that's in general, that's not every species. Um, orchid mantises, the males are teeny compared to the females. A tiny, tiny portion. They grow a hell of a lot faster. So if you are intending on breeding these, um, you're going to have to find, well, I say you're going to have to find a way. I'll tell you how. Um, you're going to have to slow down the growth of the male, speed up the growth of the female. Here is one of the females. Um, the other way you can sex these guys is the little strip on their back. Uh, you normally can't see this until at least sort of L3 or 4. Um, but the females have a green strip, and the males have a little brown strip. Um, so, in terms of temperature, uh, they want a little bit hotter than most things. Um, so about 25 degrees to 28 degrees. I'm not saying that you're going to want to have, you know, thermometers and heat mats and everything. In my room, this here room, it is a hot room. And what I can do is on any of the top shelves, it gets to correct temperature. And I have some thermometers on my walls. Um, so the lower down in the room, the cooler, higher up, the hotter, cooler, hot, cool, hot. And so all of my orchids tend to stay on the hotter shelves. And they also want a bit more humidity than a lot of mantises. It's 60, 80 percent. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not measuring the humidity every day. That's uh, it's fine if you've got a single one. But you know, I've got shelves lined with prey mantises. That's that's madness. Um, so when they're little nymphs, spray once a week. Um, as they get older, I spray more often, and this is this can be the issue for orchids. Um, I like to spray mine every day. However, and this is the big however, they must have ventilation. Uh, another major point, primantis, you always want as much ventilation as you can get, um, and. Sorry, you always want as much ventilation as you can get. Um, so it's about getting the combination of humidity and ventilation because any stale air and orchids are prone, absolutely prone to dying from stale air. Um, yeah, it's going to be an issue for them. So you've got two options. One, get yourself a sweet jar, get yourself any enclosure you'd normally use. You can use... Uh, where is one? Let me have a look. Have I got any mantises in any of these things? Oh, these are all empty at the moment, but you know, you can use these sort of things and he's got a mesh lid. However, though that would be fine for a lot of prey mantises, that mesh for an orchid is not going to do. You're going to want to mesh at least one side half, the other side half. You want this, you want as much ventilation as you can and I cannot stress how much ventilation you want. I'd say 90% of the time when I get messages from people saying my orchid has just dropped down, it's the ventilation thing and they say oh, I had holes in the sides and I had mesh on the lid and it's not enough. It's just not enough. Now your other way of getting around this, um, where you do just have ventilation on the top, is to have a massive enclosure. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying outrageously big, but big for the size of the orchid. So what I use. Um, which I've gone to using, and it seems a little bit much, um, is, let me just make it so I can twizzle my camera. Can I twizzle it now? No, no, can't twizzle my camera. What I tend to use is exoterries. Now, Yes, I know what you're going to say is they are only meshed on the top with a bit of ventilation on the sides. You've just said that's not enough. But I 
think what it is, where there's such a large amount of space for the air to circulate, it doesn't sit and get stale. Whereas in one of these cups, what you're going to find is the air sits in the bottom. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but the air will sit in there and it just, it won't work. So I'm stressing to you now, ventilation, 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 or a large enclosure. And then if you wanted to really, really guarantee you're gonna have no issues, just get yourself a mesh enclosure. One of these, they're cheap. Um, they occasionally have them on spider shop. I mean, they're, they're easy to store if you don't want them anymore. This one's dirty as hell. Um, but yeah, I mean, the only issue with these is they look dreadful. But if you can get yourself something similar to that, I don't know if you've seen in my older videos, I used to have mesh enclosures I used for my devil's flowers. Um, they were just a wooden frame with insect mesh. That's ideal, absolutely ideal. Um, yeah, ventilate, ventilate, ventilate. That's the thing. Um, what's next? What else do you need to know? Uh, feeding wise, now this is something Again, I see too many people feeding their orchid mantises crickets. Um, yeah, they can take crickets, and for a fly catching mantis, you look at their arms and they've got big arms, and they can take pretty decent sized food. Fair enough. Once every now and then, that's fine. However, you've got to think, every time they're taking prey like that, it's, uh, you know, it's taking a hell of a lot of energy out of the mantis, and it's energy it shouldn't be spending on that. Um, you look at them, they're built to sit on a flower and catch whichever flies in. Obviously, sometimes they're going to get bees and things which are a bit big, hoverflies. Um, and so that's why they've got these little strong graspers. Um, they are strong graspers. Uh, but it's not, it's not meant for always catching sort of big, big prey. I mean, you look at sort of these panthers that I've got or these... Uh, you know, God, what else? Basically, any uh, Herodula or Herodula, however you want to pronounce it, they've got big arms and they're meant for catching this big prey. Um, but these orchids, they want flies, ideally. So 90% flies is the way to go. You can throw in cricket here and there, moth here and there. I've certainly fed mine crickets, I've never had any issues. Um, but, you know, stick to what nature intended and you'll tend to not go wrong. The other trick is uh, if you've got your mail, I keep my mail at probably about 19 degrees. I, I reckon you could go down to 18, but that'd be pushing it a bit. Um, and I feed him once every four days. And that is a real push. But that is because I need to slow down his growth. I was saying earlier about growth. Female, trying to push her growth. She's solidly at sort of 28 degrees. Sometimes, I, sometimes it probably gets a bit warmer at the top of her enclosure. And she's got flies all day, all night. Flies, flies everywhere. Flies everywhere. And so, uh, the way the way to breed these guys is obviously to push the female into growing fast, slow the male down. Unless, ideally, you can get your female at a separate occasion to the male when he's already younger. Um, yeah, I mean... Aside from that, they're stunning mantises. And if you can get it right, you know, they're a showpiece. The other thing that you're gonna find is that it is a showpiece. Don't be handling it all the time. You see these videos of people with them all on their hands or potting up and down their arm. Yeah, maybe once every now and then, that's fine. Um, but this is a species where the males particularly are extremely skittish. And again, you don't wanna be stressing them out. So, by all means, take him out to show him off once every now and then. But don't be getting this mantis out every day thinking, oh, it's a great pet. It's, uh, it's a skittish, it's a skittish prey mantis. Um, so I guess as a general overview, I'd say, if you've had a couple of prey mantises and you want to get something that looks a bit more stunning and it's a little bit harder to keep, by all means, do it. Um, do not get this for your first prey mantis unless you're very confident or you know you're you're happy for not happy for things to go wrong that's a bad way of putting it but 
you know, you want to be extremely responsible if this is your first Prey Mantis. It's, uh, it's got the potential to make or break how your introduction into this hobby may be. Um, and what you want to do is you want to push the hobby. You want to you want to have loads of hobby. You want to have loads of Prey Mantis. You want to enjoy it. You want to enjoy owning them, and it can be a real killer um, of the hobby if your first Prey Mantis dies extraordinarily fast. Um, yeah, I guess I guess that's I guess that's about it. Well, that was probably a little bit more depressing than most videos that I do, um, but I hope it was <laughs> a bit informative. A bit informative. I hope it was a little bit informative. Um, I also, whilst I'm here and have you, want to say I should be at the Bristol show. If anyone wants to head down to the Bristol Tarantula show, do it it will be great um, I'm not sure exactly who will be selling stuff there I know that the spider shop will be there and um, which will be fantastic they always are um, as far as I'm aware Daniel Oakley will be there I'm just trying to think and there's one in Brighton as well at some point but the one I'm thinking about is uh, the Bristol show which is the 22nd of July and uh, it, I'll tell you what, after, oh god, what is that? After the BTS, um, yeah, it'd be great to meet everyone again. Absolutely love the BTS. Definitely recommend it. And if you're thinking about picking up, thinking about, thinking about picking up your first Praying Mantis, um, that's a great place to do it. And if you aren't sure, by all means, leave me a comment. Uh, if you'd like to talk to me about Primances at the show, grab me, give me a shake, be like, ah, yeah, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, that is weird. Um, and yeah, I'd be happy to talk. It'd be great. Um, on that note, I've been talking to myself for a good ten minutes in here, five minutes in here, however long it was, and I'm probably going to go now. Um,